Here we are, back to Mr. Tuckett. Francis couldn't figure out what to do. First, he decided he wanted to stay at, on at Standing Bear's village, but then he found that he wanted to go on with Mr. Grimes. He had announced that he wouldn't be able to ride the pony for a while, but even so, Mr. Grimes shook him awake at dawn the next morning. Come on, Mr. Tuckett. There's a horse to be picked out, and we have to be on our way today. I swear, you sleep like a bear in winter. Actually, there wasn't a horse to be picked out. Standing Bear had already done the picking, and true to Indian form, he had chosen the best pony in the corral. She was a mare, and except for a white splotch of hair across her rump in the shape of a bird's wing, she was as black as the night. Standing Bear pointed to her with pride, smiled, and talked and sued to Mr. Grimes, who reported to Francis. He says he's picked the pony for two reasons. One, she is good. Two, she, he hears that you have a special liking for black mares. <laughs> That's a joke, and you should laugh. <laughs> Francis laughed. Standing Bear talked some more. He says that he's been she's been trained to hunt buffalo, and you should steer her with your knees. Nod and smile. Francis nodded and smiled at the chief. It wasn't what he'd normally call a smiling morning. The sun wasn't warm yet. He hadn't gone to sleep until well past midnight, and he wouldn't have made it. He, and he wouldn't have made it from his burrowed buffalo hide robe bed to the corral if Mr. Grimes hadn't half dragged him. It seemed like all he had done since getting lost from the wagon train was to get stiffer and stiffer. Standing Bear acknowledged Francis' smile. He said something in Sue. The pony is now yours, Mr. Grimes translated. You can take her to your, to your lodge. I guess he means that you slept last night. I guess he means where you slept last night, up by old Footloose. The mare had a rope halter. Francis opened the corral gate and tried to grab the halter. She backed away, mixing it with some of the other ponies. He looked questioningly at Mr. Grimes. How do I catch her? You could run her down, the mountain man, mountain man answered. Francis gave him a nasty look. He could barely walk. At that moment, Mr. Grimes stepped into the corral with a horse hide rope. He flipped it, flipped it out once, twice, and on the third try, the noose fell over the mare's head. She stopped then at the feel of the rope on her neck, and Francis hobbled up to her. Come on, Mr. Tuckett, said the mountain man. Climb on. Let's see how she takes to your weight. But, Mr. Grimes, Francis complained. I'm like a board. Give me a day or two to loosen up. The best way to loosen up is to move a bit. Now climb on before Standing Bear gets the thought that you don't like his pony. All the time he had been talking, Mr. Grimes was fashioning from a second piece of rope a war bridle, a slipknot around the mare's lower jaw. In two tries, Francis managed to get his stomach over the back of the mare. He swiveled slowly until his legs hung down either side, then sat up straight and stiff. Please, little pony, he said quietly, remember my condition. The strange part was that the pony did seem to understand. She didn't move quickly or buck or even tremble. And when, when Mr. Grimes handed him the end of the, the war bridle rope, she walked toward the gate as meekly as a kitten. It was Standing Bear who caused the trouble. Just as Francis and the pony came through the gate, the Sioux chief picked up a switch, moved behind the mare, and brought the switch down across the white splotch in her rump. Yeah! he yelled. Actually, as Mr. Grimes pointed out later, Francis should have thanked the old chief because what happened next loosened Francis in a hurry. <laughs> but when that switch landed, he was too surprised to do anything but grab the mane of the black mare and close his eyes. The mare became a dark comet, flashing through the middle of the awakening Sioux village like a fast wind. She knocked dogs out of the way and cleared cooking fires, jumping completely over one old woman kneeling over a pot of food. Through all this, Frances managed somehow to stay on her back. When the mare reached the edge of the village, she stopped. Frances naturally kept on going, and finally he stopped with his face buried in a pile of still raw buffalo hides, but his troubles weren't over yet. Coming hot on the heels of the little mare was the old woman throwing rocks as fast as she could. Francis might be a good wrestler and very smart to outwit Bray, but nobody jumped a horse over the old woman and her cook fire and got away with it. Francis was quick to recognize disaster. Forgetting the mare, he made a dash back toward the safety of Mr. Grimes. Mr. Grimes wasn't offering much safety. In fact, he wasn't offering anything. He and Standing Bear were wrapped over the top of the pole of the corral, laughing till tears ran down their cheeks. 
Keep it up, Mr. Tuckett, the trapper said as Francis ran by. She's gaining on you. <laughs> Within a hundred yards, Francis outran the old woman and her deadly rocks and had also managed to kick away about ten of the camp dogs that had been snapping at his heels. Jokers, he mumbled, returning to the corral. The mare had walked back, looking as meek as she had before the wild ride. Real jokers, I bet you get a lot of laughs out of throwing people off cliffs. <laughs> now, Mr. Tuckett, old standing bear, just wanted you to know you were getting a pony that knew how to run. <laughs> the mountain man was barely holding back laughter. Besides, looking how loose you are, you might as well be an old wash rag. <laughs> Francis nodded, looking down on himself. And I looked like one, too, but his anger weakened fast, and he smiled. The truth was he had loosened up. Well, we'll stop early today, Mr. Grimes said. I feel like some fresh antelope, and you can just carry your buckskins until then, so you can take a bath and start all new. I guess I'll go with you, Francis said. Oh, well, that depends, Mr. Tuckett. On what? On whether or not you can spend half a day riding downwind of me. You smell positively right from those hides. <laughs> that was Mr. Tuckett. <laughs> that was chapter 10. <laughs> More tomorrow. Bye.